and let's go to screen share probably should have done that first um, yep 8.3 make sure I'm in the right one and I'm going to scooch all over to the right just a tad okay I'm also going to drop this toolbar which why they put it in the middle of the screen I don't know but they do and we'll go from current slide okay now we've already done example one and two we're getting ready to start example three any questions before we get going on example three today okay now example three we'll go to the whiteboard to do that one and that's going to take a little bit more maneuvering around so hold on let me move this taskbar out of the way as much as I can and move the whiteboard in the other direction into white space as much as I can okay I think that will just about do me all right any questions all right we're in chapter 8 integration techniques and improper intervals we're going to integrals we're going to focus mostly on integration techniques uh, 8.3 is trigonometric uh, integrals and that's what we're doing now and that's where example 3 comes into play okay so here is the integral we're attempting to solve okay we're trying to integrate cosine fourth x dx okay indefinite integral here now um, probably I should have flipped back just to remind you what the the rules are here so let me go back and show you those rules again okay because I know it was last time let's go back to 83 and we'll go back a couple of there they are okay well it was supposed to go back to there and it didn't okay so let's do it this way there we go all right now when either the power of sine is odd and positive of course or the power of cosine is odd and positive then there's a technique that we use and it's pretty straightforward however there can be the case when the powers of both sine and cosine are even and non-negative okay so in that case we use this formula here now we don't have a sine squared in the one we're doing now is a cosine squared actually cosine to the fourth even so this is the one we're going to be using okay get used to that okay that's that that is a key there so let's go back to the whiteboard and so the what we're going to use here now for some reason I was doing a lab yesterday in my physical science class and we got our colors off so I'm going back to black here okay it was sort of a brown okay this is going to be the integral of cosine square x squared dx okay we're squaring cosine and then squaring that that gives us cosine to the fourth okay now the identity we were just re referencing there um, and again this is on page 532 okay this cosine squared x that we have here is 1 plus cosine 
2x, okay, this is a power reduction formula, divided by 2, okay? But then that thing is squared, and then we have our dx here, okay? Now, what are we going to do with that? Well, one thing we're going to do, since this is a constant here, square in the, uh, 2 in the denominator, but you're squaring it, let's pull that 1 fourth outside. That 2 squared, pull it on the outside. Okay, now what we have left here is a square of a binomial. So that's 1 plus 2 cosine 2x two plus cosine squared of 2x. Okay, I hope you remember how to square a binomial, and that's the dx then. Okay, square the first, 1 squared is 1, twice the product of the 2, 2 cosine 2x, two square the last. Okay, now this we can handle, this we can handle, this is another <coughs> even power of cosine. So, let's carry it through, 1 over 4. Now let's go on and, and integrate this. Antiderivative of 1 dx is x, okay? Plus, well, not quite. Let me, yesterday my eraser quit working, and it seems to be quitting working today too. I, this aggravates me no end. There's no reason that that should not be. They have it here in place and I can't get it to go. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Okay, the antiderivative of cosine is sine, right? Okay, so here we have so, uh, because derivative of sine is cosine, so it is a plus there. Uh, we have the 2 from here, and this would be sine of 2x over 2, because the antiderivative of that would be that, so that's over 2. So these two 2's disappear. They cancel out, okay? Plus, now this one, we're going to have to do the integral again. Okay, and this is a cosine squared 2x dx. All right. Now, this will be 1 fourth x plus 1 fourth sine 2x. plus, all right, this integral, we're going to do the same thing we did here. Um, we're going to change this square to this, okay, when we went from here to here. So this is going to be um, 1 plus cosine of 4x now. It was a it's a 2x here, and we increase that, we double that, so that's going to be a 4x, okay, over 2, okay. Now, we don't have to square this, because that's where that square came from. So this all we've got right here, dx. All right, now, so this is going to be 1 fourth x, or x over 4 if you prefer it plus one-fourth sine 2x okay plus all right now here we have a one-half so that's going to be the integral of one-half dx is just one-half x okay now I failed to do something here. This one-fourth is in front of all these, so let me pull this one-fourth here. Okay, sorry about that. See, the one-fourth is times this, one-fourth times this, 
and one fourth times that. So we need that one fourth in there. I almost forgot about it. Okay. So we have a one. Oh, here comes somebody. I think it must be Ash. No, Andy. Okay. So Andy's here. We got two A's here. I didn't know which A it was. So Andy's here. Just missing Ashton. Okay. So welcome, Andy. Let me just make sure that I don't have somebody else out there waiting. Uh, doesn't look like it. All right. Looks like we're good. Just need one more for perfect attendance. Hopefully, Ashton will be coming in. Okay. So, Andy, we're in uh, Chapter 8, uh, Integration Techniques and Improper Integrals. So we're going to focus on integration techniques. We're in 8.3, which are trigonometric integrals. Uh, and we're on page 534, example 3. Not on the PowerPoint, so we're doing it on the whiteboard. Okay. Um, now, this is where it started, the integral of cosine fourth. We made that cosine squared squared. The cosine squared on the inside, we used the identity, 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. We... And, but that was squared, so we pulled out the one-fourth, and then we squared the binomial here. So we had that done. Then that one-fourth on the outside, the antiderivative of 1, dx, is x. And the antiderivative of 2 cosine 2x is 2 sine 2x over 2. The 2's go out. Okay? But then we have an integral of cosine squared 2x dx. Okay? Now... This becomes 1 fourth x. This becomes 1 fourth sine 2x. And this, I almost forgot, that 1 fourth carries over here too. 1 fourth. Now we're going to... Stinking... Um, clip keeps falling off my pocket. Um, I don't know why. It's just sort of sorry. Okay. Um, we're going to do the same thing we did up here with the cosine squared. Only we got a cosine squared 2x, okay? So this is going to be 1 plus cosine 4x over 2, okay? So this is where we've gotten to so far. So 1 fourth of 1 half, that would be 1 eighth, okay? If I can find my pen down here, if I can get the right end of the pen, okay? So this will be 1 eighth. 1 fourth times 1 half, 1 dx, that would be another x here, okay? And then we have a plus again because the antiderivative of a cosine is sine, uh, and this would be, let's get the 1 eighth in there from here, and then you got a sine of 4x, antiderivative of that is over 4. So this will be, I can't get my eraser to work. So this will be a 1 8th that was there divided by 4 is 1 32nd. Okay. And then finally we have our plus C. Okay. So that's what I think the answer is. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We can do some combining of like terms here. 1 4th X plus 1 8th X. That's 2 eighths x plus 1 eighth x is 3 eighths x plus 1 quarter sine 2 x plus 1 thirty second sine 4 x plus c. All right, that's what I think it is. Let's see what they got. 3 eighths x, or 3x over 8. Fine, either way you want to do it. Sine 2x over 4, got it. Plus sine 4x over 32, plus c. Done. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, now. What if we would have had a definite integral there? 
say going from 0 to pi halves. So what if that would have been 0 to pi halves then? Okay, then we would have had everything we had down to here except we would have evaluated this from 0 to pi halves. Okay, well, whoops, should have done this one. 0 to pi halves. Okay, when you plug a pi halves in for x, this would have been 3 pi over 16. So that would have been started off 3 pi over 16. That would have been that term. Then we would have had uh, sine of 2x. Well, 2 times pi halves is pi. Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 4 times pi halves, that's 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0. So that gives you absolutely nothing. Okay? Nothing. And then you plug in your zeros here. 3 eighths of 0 is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So there's your answer. 3 pi over 16 if this would have been 0 to pi halves. 3 pi sixteenths. Note that the only term that contributes to the solution is your 3 eighths x. That observation was generalized in the following formulas developed by John Wallace uh, 1616 16 through 1703. Um, now, Wallace did much of his work in calculus prior to Newton and Le Leibniz. Okay? He influenced the thinking of both of those men. He is credited with the present symbol, uh, introducing the present symbol, the sideways 8 for infinity. Okay? Now, if I'm not mistaken, and I may be, but I believe Wallace was the head of the math department at Cambridge University when uh, Newton was a student there. So that's why he had such great influence on Newton, because he was his mentor, you might say. Uh, but Wallace was also, it seems like to me, now I may be reading too much into this, a very humble man as well, because I think he recognized Newton's brilliance, and he stepped down from being the chair to let Newton become chair, because, hey, Newton was just blowing everybody out of the water. And it could have easily been imaginable that, you know, he would have tried to hang on to what he had and resented Newton. He didn't. He stepped aside to let Newton become the Lucasian chair of mathematics. Okay. So let's go back to, that was just a little bit of a history thing. Let's go back if I can find, there it is, back to the PowerPoints. Okay, and these are Wallace's formula. Well, ah, there they are. Bottom of page 534. If n is odd, but it has to be greater than or equal to 3, then the integral of 0 to pi halves, cosine, uh-oh, my internet connection is unstable. I do see there's a fair amount of wind outside. How is it? What, did I break up some then? He's doing good. Okay. All righty. Okay. But because the internet is stable, now I've got this window here that's blocking what you're seeing. So <laughs> Hold on just a minute. I'm still struggling with... pretty severe anemia so <coughs> it's been a weird weird couple of weeks and uh, maybe longer than that but either I'm getting used to the anemia or I'm feeling better with it okay because I feel like I am a little bit stronger uh, and not quite as as tired as I was even yesterday okay uh, 
but again I may be getting used to it. So here's Wallace's formula. If n is odd, now the one we just did n was even. Remember it was cosine fourth x. But this is n odd greater than or equal to 3. Then the integral from 0 to pi halves of cosine to the nth x is, now rather strange how they do this. This is 2 over 3. In other words, n minus 1 over n. Okay? If n, the first n would be 3, that would be 2 thirds. If that was n was 5, odd, but greater than 3, then it would be 2 over 3 times 4 over 5. Okay? If it was 7, then it would be 2 over 3 times 4 over 5 times 6 over 7. And it keeps going up until you reach n minus 1 over n. And that's what these represent. Two mi uh, 3 minus 1 over 3, 5 minus 1 over 5, 7 minus uh, 1 over 7, n minus 1 over n. Okay, now, what if your n was odd, I mean even, which ours was, it was a 4. That n has to be greater than or equal to 2, ours was a 4, then it's the integral from 0 to pi halves would be cosine nth x uh, dx, and this would have been um, n minus 1 over n, so if that n was 2, <clears throat> 2 minus 1 over 2, that's 1 half. If it was 4, then it's times 3 over 4. If it was 6, it's times 5 over 6. If it's 8, it, it keeps on going. The next would have been 7 over 8 and so on. Until, and then at the end, you multiply it by pi halves, not 1. Up here, for n odd, it's just 1. For n even, you multiply it by pi halves. Well, we stopped right here because we had n equal 4, so it would be 3 eighths times pi halves, and that was 3 sixteenths pi, exactly what we got. Those formulas are also valid when cosine nx is replaced with sine nx. Pretty clever to have come up with this, especially since Newton hadn't invented calculus yet okay uh, this is pretty incredible that Wallace came up with these formulas um, before integration was even invented okay I don't know how he did it but anyway there's Wallace's formula and by the way John Wallace is a potential paper topic hint hint I right now I'm trying to recall it seems like only one person has turned in a research paper yet please don't forget about your research papers. We're on, what is it, week 11 now out of 16? Don't have that many more to go, folks, so please don't forget about doing your research paper. And we're in uh, October, but don't have much longer left in October. Uh, so if you get it in this month, you still get your two bonus points. But if you turn it in in November, you only get one bonus point. If you turn it in in December, you just get your grade. Okay. So, any questions? Wallace's formulas. Okay. Now, we're moving on to integrals involving powers of secant and tangent. This is on page 535. Okay. The guidelines below help you find integrals in that form. Okay. Integral of secant mx tangent nx dx. I'm sorry this window is here. It's bored. Doesn't that block some of your reading or can you see pretty well with that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when the power of secant is even, the power for secant is even and positive. Okay. Has to be positive too. Save a secant squared factor convert the remaining factors to tangents. How do we do that? Uh, tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. So save one even secant and the this, this second power, okay, and then the rest of them we will use the tangent identity, the, the Pythagorean identity, okay. 
So if this is an even number, 2K, um, pull out one factor of secant squared right there. Okay, that's, there's a factor of that one. Then you have 2K secant squared times K minus 1 because you pulled out 2. This is rather awkward the way they write it. And just leave the tangents alone. It doesn't really matter on the tangent. Okay. Now, this secant squared raised to the k minus 1. Secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared x. And that's raised to the k minus 1. Then you have your tangent x and you have your secant squared x. Why do we do this? Because derivative of tangent is secant squared. This is in terms of tangent. That's in terms of tangent, so you just multiply through, raise this to the power, whatever your k minus 1 is. Once you get it raised to the power, multiply through by tangent n, and then you have functions of tangents here, and there's the derivative of tangent there. Now, what if the power of tangent is odd and positive? Then save a secant tangent factor, secant times tangent, and convert the remaining factors to secants. Now, why is that? Because derivative of secant is secant tangent. Okay, so if the power of tangent is odd, pull out one of those tangents, and you have plenty of secants there. Okay, so you have a secant tangent. You've reduced the secant by one, and this tangent is to an even power now because it was odd you pulled out one it's now even change that to secant squared minus one to the kth power okay and now everything here is in terms of secant and there's your d secant right there so that's how we deal with integrals involving powers of secant and tangent if the power of secant is even and positive go to the first route if the power of tangent is odd and positive, then go the second route. Now, you might ask yourself, what if the power of secant is odd and the power of tangent is even? Well, you got some problems, okay? We don't have a rule for that, but we do have a rule for this. So, oh, here we go. When there are no secant factors and the power of tangent is even, and positive, convert the tangent squared factor to a secant squared factor, then expand. So this was what we do if the power of tangent is even and positive. Okay, what we do is pull out one secant squared, and that leaves you secant to the n minus two, I mean tangent, pull out a tangent squared, that leaves you a tangent to the n minus two. Uh, this one right there, convert to secants, perfectly fine. And what we have here is um, your, okay, they, they've sort of left out a, a whole bunch of steps here, okay? Um, this tangent squared, okay, you convert to secants by secant squared minus 1, okay? Now, the tangent to the n minus 2, remember it was even to begin with, no secant factors, tangent is even to begin with, then what you have here, derivative of tangent is secant squared. So there you have the derivative, and then this one, the tangent even, do, do it again, and do it again until you get down to nothing, okay? Now, when the integral of the, and I can't, I have to wait until this fades away. Hopefully it'll do it sometime soon. When the integral of is of the form secant to the mx, no tangents in that, uh, where m is odd and positive, use integration by parts, okay? Uh, and you pull out one secant, uh, and then the rest of them. So secant odd and positive, you get back. When the first four guidelines do not apply, 
try converting to sines and cosines. That's always a good technique. But if, if nothing else works, go back to converting to sines and cosines. See what you can do. Okay? So, a lot of if-then-elses here. Okay? So, let's do example four. This is on the bottom of page 535. Find that one. Okay, well, the first thing I'm going to do here, if I can get my pen to show up, there it is, I think, there it is, okay. Now, I'm going to change this to the integral, <coughs> I'm sorry, okay, of tangent cubed x times secant to the minus one half x okay the radical is to the one half and the denominator is minus to the one half and then your dx now we sure don't want to mess around with that very much but what are we going to do <clears throat> um, and let's just scroll back just for a moment so we can see which one we have okay uh, we certainly don't have secant being even and positive. Not this one. Okay. Tangent odd and positive, we do have that one. So we're going to pull out a secant tangent factor and con uh, convert the remaining factors to secants. So that's the technique here. Okay. Now, <laughs> easier said than done. Okay. So what are we going to do here? And the, that bar is right in the middle of my screen. I wish I could do something with it. I can't. Uh, this will be the integral. Pull out a tangent and a secant. Okay. And convert everything. So this will leave you a tangent squared x. If you pull out a tangent. And this will then be pull out a secant x. So this will now become a secant to the minus three halves power okay I'm running out of room here and what we've left with is a tangent x secant x dx okay now let's just check and make sure we got it right secant i mean tangent squared times tangent that's tangent cubed that works well secant to the minus three halves times secant to the two halves that would give you secant to the minus one half. Yes, we've got it. This is the derivative of secant. So let's get this in terms of secant. All right. So I'm going to come over here and do the integral. Tangent squared is secant squared x minus one. Because one plus tangent squared is secant squared. So tangent squared would be secant squared minus 1. Okay. This is multiplied by the secant to the minus 3 halves, which is sort of ugly looking, but it's doable. Minus 3 halves x. And then this is your derivative of secant. Okay. I'll leave it as tangent x times secant x dx. All right, so let's multiply, distribute this secant to the minus 3 halves x across here. All right, now this is secant to the 4 halves times secant to the minus 3 halves. That would be secant to the minus, no, the positive 1 half x. Okay right? 4 halves minus 3 halves is positive 1 half. Okay? Minus, and when you multiply this, that's just minus secant to the minus 3 halves x. Okay? This thing is multiplied by tangent x secant x dx. Here we do our u substitution. Let u equal secant x. Okay? 
secant x. Then du is equal to, what's the root of a secant? Secant x tangent x. So I'm going to write it as tangent x secant x dx. And now you see this is your du here. So what do we have? In terms of u, we have the integral of u to the one-half x. u to the one-half x, or let's just call it x over 2, minus u secant to the minus 3 halves. Okay, got something wrong here. u is secant x, okay? So this is u to the one-half, not x. You're doing that. So let me make sure that's right. Oh, yeah. See, what I did, I put this up here. It should be down here. Secant to the one-half, or the square root of secant, x. So this is square root of u, because secant x is u. So that's to the one-half. This is the minus three-halves, OK? Uh, and then this bar over here is just merely your du. OK, we can integrate that, right? Antiderivative of u to the one-half, u to the, well, I don't need the integral there anymore, sorry. OK, increase this by one, which is two halves. Two halves plus one half is three halves. And then divide by the three halves or multiply by two thirds. OK, minus, increase this by one, and you have, that's two halves, um, that u to the minus one half, but then you multiply or divide by negative one half, which makes that a plus, and that would be a two over one, okay? And then, oh, this is not definite integral, okay? Um, and there's your integral. Now go back and plug in what u is, secant x, okay? So this answer, um, okay, plus c, I forgot to put that. This is two-thirds secant to the three-halves power of x plus two times secant to the negative one-half x plus c. All right, that's what I hope our example four is. Let's see what they got. Two-thirds secant x raised to the three-halves power, why they put it like they did, I don't know, plus two secant to the minus one-half x, Okay, I don't know why they did it there, plus C. Same answer, they wrote, or just wrote it in a slightly different form. Any question on example four? Okay, well, whether you do or not, let's watch how they did it. So let's clear my scratch out of the way, and let's see what they do. Because you expect to use the power rule with U equals secant X, now, to me, that's jumping the gun. They're saying, we know what the answer is. Here's what it is. We're going to do that, okay? Save a factor of secant x tangent x to form your du and convert the remaining tangents factors to secants. That's what we did. It just seems like they're looking in the crystal ball a little too clearly uh, knowing what they're, they're planning to do, okay? So basically what that becomes is the integral of secant to the minus one half, secant x to the minus one half. I don't know why they don't put secant to the minus one half x, but they don't. And then tangent cubed, that was what you had there, times dx, okay? Now, we're gonna pull out one secant and one tangent. When you pull out a secant from secant to the minus one half, that gets you secant to the minus three halves, okay? and pull out a tangent here, leaving you a tangent squared, and then there's your secant tangent. This is your du, okay? 
So what we need to do is get this tangent squared in terms of secant. Oh, man, why did it do that? Oh, I'm just, my zoom quit. I don't know if you can hear me still. Okay. Did we lose you there for a moment? Okay. I don't know why Zoom did what it did. Okay. It just kicked me right out. So let's go back to, come on, where is my, is that it? I think it is. I think it is. Let me see. Yeah, there it is. Now I've got to move everything back. All the manipulation I did before, I've got to undo now. Okay. So, yeah, when we pulled this out, this is what we got. This is secant to the minus 3 halves because we pulled a secant out of that, pulled a tangent out of that, leaving you a tangent squared. So you see you reduced by this by a factor of 2 halves. So that became minus 3 halves. Reduce that by a factor of 1, which is 2 halves, and that would be tangent squared. And then you have this. This is your du and what we got to do is get this tangent squared into a secant squared and that's a pretty easy Pythagorean identity. That would be secant squared x minus 1. So now distribute this secant to the minus 3 halves across here and across there leaving this as your secant tangent dx. Okay. So this will be secant to the minus 3 halves times secant to the 4 halves, that would be secant x to the 1 half, and then this remains minus the secant x to the minus 3 halves. Now, why are they writing this this way? I don't know. And then this becomes your du. Okay? We haven't gotten there yet, but you see now we let u equal secant x here, here, and du will be that. Now, they don't do the u substitution. Why, I don't know. It just seems so much more reasonable to do a U substitution than just do it in your head. But they're doing it in their head. Okay, So this becomes a secant to the 3 halves when you increase that by 1. And then you divide by 3 halves, which is multiplying by 2 thirds. This one becomes, uh, increase that by 1 and you get secant x to the minus 1 half. Dividing by minus one half, that changes the minus to a plus two over one. And then that, of course, is your du. So there's your answer right there. All right, that was example four. Somewhat of a little hairy problem there, okay? Not too bad. Now, they're skipping examples five, six, and seven. So let's go to our whiteboard and do example five and since it clicked out on me I've got to redo all this okay and we'll do this I've got to move you all over a little bit too okay and move the whiteboard a little bit to the opposite direction you probably can't see anything I'm doing because you probably just see a white screen and you don't see that I'm moving it because it's all white. But I am moving it so I can. Okay, my internet connection is unstable, so I'm going to hold off until this goes away. Did I break up a little bit then? Oh, say again? A little bit. Okay, so I'm back again. By the way, uh, I guess we have a tropical storm on the way, don't we? Uh, has the Zeta made landfall on the Gulf Coast yet? Has anyone been following that? Um, yeah, I don't know either, but my wife said that we are supposed to get some pretty fierce wind. I don't know if that's going to be today or tomorrow, uh, but I think that's why we got all the moisture in the air now. The good news is I don't see much wind at all right now, but there could be wind elsewhere somewhere, and that's what making the internet somewhat sketchy. Okay, 
So let's do example five. Okay. Let's see, and we go until 1140, right? So we got about a little less than an hour to go. That's right, is it? I think so. Okay. So here's our example five. Find this integral. The integral of secant fourth x see this time they wrote it oops oh, that's secant fourth of 3x okay times tangent cubed of 3x that's a pretty ugly 3 I don't know why the pen chooses to write so poorly dx okay now this smacks of going to be a couple of u substitutions here, perhaps. Okay. Now, what are the rules for us? Well, derivative of tangent is secant squared. Okay. And since we have a secant to the fourth here, that looks like that's what we need to do is pull out a secant squared and we'll deal with the tangent cubed. Okay. So let's do that. Okay, and this will be the integral of secant squared x, 3x, I keep forgetting the 3 there, okay, times the tangent cubed of 3x, and this will then be a secant squared of 3x dx okay all we did was pull a secant squared out of this one put it over here okay now this secant squared we're going to put in terms of tangent squared so this is going to be the integral of secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared x good old Pythagorean identity that's times the tangent cubed of 3x and then the secant squared of 3x dx. Okay, now, oops, I did it again. Forgot that 3 there. This is 1 plus tangent squared of 3x. Keep forgetting that first one. Okay, now let's distribute that tangent cubed across. So this will be the integral of tangent cubed of 3x, I got it that time, plus tangent to the fifth of 3x. That's what you get from multiply that one by that one. Okay, and then we have a secant squared of 3x dx. Now, well, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry, this thinking. Hey, that way my eraser is working again. I guess when it checked out on me, my eraser came back. Thank you very much. So here's what we're going to do. I can't quite figure out the order I want to do them. So let's let let um, u equal, and here's where I'm in a sort of a dilemma. Let's go on and do tangent 3x, okay? Tangent of 3x, okay? Then du is going to be secant squared of 3x times 3 dx. Okay. Now, here we have a secant squared of 3x. We don't have that 3 there, so let's divide out the 3. So this 3 disappears okay so the, what that produces is 
a one-third the integral of tangent cubed x but tan, uh, tangent cubed of 3x that would be u cubed right because u is tangent 3x and you cube that so it's u cubed plus u to the fifth and then your this is your one-third that we pulled out here uh, du Okay, I think I got that right. Let's see. Okay, so that's going to be one third. And when you do the antiderivative of this, that's going to be u to the fourth over four plus u to the fifth, not u to the sixth over six plus c. Okay, then plugging back in you get one-third times one-fourth is one-twelfth and the u is tangent 3x so this will be tangent um, fourth of 3x plus one-third times one-six is one-eighteenth tangent to the sixth of 3x plus c. I hope I got it right. Let's see what they did. Tangent fourth of 3x over 12, good, plus tangent sixth of 3x over 18 plus c, got it. Any questions on example five? All right. Well, they also are skipping example six on the PowerPoint, so let's do example six. Do I need to leave this here a little bit longer? Anybody? Everybody all right? So let me clear this out of the way, and let's do example six. Here's what we're to evaluate here. Do the integral from zero to pi fourths. This is a definite integral here. of tangent fourth of x dx. Okay. Now, let's think back what we've got to do here. Um, there's a real temptation to say we'll let u equal tangent x, right? But du then, derivative of tangent, is secant squared. We don't have a secant squared anywhere in sight, okay? So that's not probably going to be the best route to take. Now, we can get the tangent fourth as tangent squared squared, and the, one of those tangent squareds is going to be one or secant squared x minus 1. Okay, so there's a secant squared x that we needed, but we don't quite have everything we need there either. So let's go back to our PowerPoints here. Okay, and remind ourselves. what the rule was here. Now, when there are no secret factors and the power of tangent is even and positive, that's what we have, tangents to the fourth, convert a tangent squared form to a secret squared factor, that's what I was suggesting that we do, and then expand and repeat if necessary. There's the key, repeat if necessary. Okay, so that's our approach here. Split this into a tangent squared. We have tangent to the fourth, tangent squared times tangent squared. Write this tangent squared as secant squared minus one. All right. So that was the quick review 
of how to handle this okay and this will be the integral from 0 to pi fourths okay of tangent squared x times tangent squared x that's tangent to the fourth x right okay times dx all we did is expand that okay now let's do it the same way the book did that'll be the integral from 0 to pi fourths leave this tangent squared x as it is tangent squared x and make this one our secant squared x minus 1 because tangent squared x plus 1 is secant squared x so tangent squared x is secant squared x minus 1 dx alright now we're going to expand that this will be the integral from 0 to pi fourths okay now the first one of these is tangent squared x times secant squared x minus tangent squared x dx we just distributed this this way okay now how did that help us well this part right here we can use, use substitution because the derivative of tangent is secant squared okay so let's expand that a little bit here integral from 0 to pi hat pi force I said pi okay force and wrote pi halves this will be tangent squared x secant squared x dx we're going to split these in and then we'll have a minus the integral from 0 to pi force now you don't have to do it this way but to me this is a little easier to see and that would be a tangent squared x dx now this one is okay we can do a u substitution here we've got that not this one however <laughs> it's almost back what we have here except now we just write this as secant squared x minus 1 okay now uh, that's not intuitively obvious what we do with it okay uh, and well, I mean, it's not bad. Okay, so let's do the u substitution here. Okay, here we'll let u equal tangent x. Then du, if you remember your thing, derivative of tangent is secant squared x dx. So this is merely u cubed u squared du perfectly fine okay now what we'll do here it will be a minus the integral from 0 to pi fourths okay now wait just a moment well we'll come back and do that this will be just like we did here this is now secant squared x minus 1 that's what tangent squared is okay dx all right now when we do this first one we got three integrals here this one this one and that one okay on the first one here we're doing a u substitution so this is going to be the integral of u is tangent x so this is u squared du because d du is secant squared x now we need to change our limits here when x is equal to 0 tangent is 0 so the u is 0 when x is equal to pi force 
tangent of pi fourths is 1. Okay, so that's going to be our new first integral. The second integral is this one. The integral, and we don't need to do this one, I don't think. This will be a 0 to pi fourths. Secant squared x dx. Okay, and then we have a minus times a minus, which will be a plus the integral from 0 to pi fourths of just dx. Okay, now this is u cubed over 3, right? Power formula, okay? So this will be u cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1. That's just going to be 1 third, okay? Minus. Now, <laughs> what is the antiderivative of secant squared? That's tangent. Derivative of tangent is secant squared, so this is just going to be tangent x evaluated from 0 to pi fourths. We kept this in terms of x. This we changed to u, so we got that done. And then this one will be plus, this will just be x evaluated from 0 to pi fourths. We kept that in terms of x. Okay, so let's do these. Like I said, when you put a 1 in for u, you get 1 third minus 0. So the first part is going to give us a 1 third. The second part is going to be tangent of pi fourths is 1. Minus tangent of 0 is 0. So that's going to be a minus 1. Okay, and then this is going to be a plus pi fourths. Okay, so what will that be? Minus two-thirds, one-third minus one, it's minus two-thirds, plus pi-fourths. Rather bizarre little number here, but that's what I get the answer to be. Let's see how they did. Well, they didn't write it out that way, but that's what they got. Let's pull out the handy-dandy calculator and see if we did get the same thing. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm using my phone, so this is going to be a little bizarre. I've got to turn it sideways to get my pies in there. So it's going to be a 2, chain sign, make it a minus 2, divided by 3, plus pi, divided by four equal I got well yes okay I thought that was a minus sign I said how'd they get a minus sign it's point one one eight seven blah 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 they rounded it to negative uh, positive point one one nine and that's what we got okay so yes it worked out the same Okay, I'm going to plug my phone back in just in case I need it in the future. Okay, now that was example six. Okay, now I don't know why most of the time I don't have this issue, but I seem to be having it today. I think I need to do a bladder break. Most of the time I don't, but for some reason today I do. So let's pause the recording here. Why don't y'all get up and stretch? I need to run to the restroom. I'll be right back. Okay? Sorry about this, but I need to take a break. That long. All right. We just finished example six. Let's move on to example seven. Any questions on six? While y'all were pondering it while I was gone? None? All right, let's move to example seven. Now, remember they said, if you can't think of anything else to do, then convert to sine and cosine. And that's what example seven is going to be doing. Okay, here's what we've got. 
the integral of sec of x divided by tangent squared x. dx. Now, <laughs> um, what we have is an odd secant, okay, and let's just quickly go back and see where our, what our rules say. Okay. All right. This has secant factors, so three is out. Okay when it's secant to the m with no tangent, that's out, okay? Let's go back a slide. When secant is even, that's out because this one, the secant is odd. And the tangent odd, well, the tangent is in the denominator, okay? It says odd and positive, that's out. So none of our guidelines work, okay? <clears throat> secant is not even. Okay, remember that secant is just secant x, that's odd. The tangent is odd and positive, or the tangent was even and negative. Okay, so that one's out. Okay, this one, no secant factors. No, we have a secant factor, so that one's out. And this one says when it's of the form, oops, 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 here comes Andy. Okay, I thought Andy was still here. I guess he had to bounce out and come back. Uh, we still haven't seen Ashton, though. Hopefully Ashton will be back will be coming in so welcome back oh okay and he was here twice but now he's here once okay so when all else fails when the first four guidelines do not apply try converting to sines and cosines and that's what we're going to do here okay so there is our <coughs> integral none of the four guidelines work so we're going to need to convert to sines and cosines, which is usually a pretty good thing to do if you get stopped anyway. Okay, so what will this be? Well, secant, square, uh, secant x is 1 over cosine. So that would be 1 over cosine x. Tangent squared x is sine squared over cosine, but the sine squared is, is down here, sine squared x over cosine squared x and then you have a dx well this cosine will go into one of those cosines okay now what do we have well this is a more complicated thing let's let that be our u let the innermost part of that would be a sine x let u equal sine x. Then du is equal to derivative of sine is cosine x dx. Hey, that's working pretty nicely. There's your du and here's your u right here. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the integral of u to the minus 3, so let's write it that way, u to the minus 3 du, because the du is cosine x dx. All right, now this is a, an indefinite integral, so there's not much we can do with it. Uh, Go have a plus c in it. What would we do then? That would be u to the increase that by 1, that makes a minus 2, divide by minus 2, minus 2, oops, this thing is so aggravating. Okay, u to the mi dividing by minus 2, okay, and then we got a plus c. All right, so what will this be? Minus 1 half. And the u is sine x, so that would be, uh, I guess I'll go on and write the sine x in the denominator. Uh, so minus 1 over 2 sine squared x plus.
plus C. Okay, or you could have written it negative one half sine to the minus two plus C. I don't know which way they wrote it. Let's see what they got. Well, <laughs> they wrote it this way. Minus one half. One over sine squared is cosecant squared. Plus C. Okay. That's how they wrote it. A negative. Uh-oh. What happened to their... Okay. Oh, I misread. Okay. That looks like a 3. That's only a 2. Sorry about that. <coughs> that's not u to the minus 3. That's u to the minus 2. It's my lousy writing is what did that. That's not a 3. That's a 2. So this becomes a minus 1 and a minus 1. So this becomes minus. Yeah. So this is just. Um, minus 1 and this will be a minus 1 so this is minus cosecant x plus c sorry about that that 2 looked like a 3 and I've carried it over as a 3 sorry about that this pen just drives me nuts because it drags sometimes and skips sometimes and you can't tell which way it's doing. All right, sorry about that. Minus cosecant x plus c. All right. Now, let's go back to our PowerPoints. Okay. Okay. Zoom the slideshow here if I can get my pen to show up here. Come on, where are you? Why it disappears sometime, I don't know. Okay, so that was example four we've done. Now, intervals, integrals involving sine cosine products. Middle of page 537. Okay. Integrals involving the products of sines and cosines, not necessarily the powers, the products, okay, of two angles, okay, occur in many applications. Now, I guess they do. Most of the time, you don't run into these, but occasionally you might. In such instances, you can use the following product to sum formulas. Now, if you remember back in trig, and I know all of you had trig, uh, some of you had a pretty lousy instructor for trig, but hopefully you remember something from that, um, you can use the following product to sum formulas. Now, do I memorize these things? Absolutely not, okay? I look them up if I need them, okay? So if you have a product of sine mx times cosine nx, why that did there, I don't know, I'm not touching the screen, then that is one half the cosine of m minus nx minus the cosine of m plus nx. Yeah, I remember that one. No, nah, not really. Okay. Now, things to note here. This parentheses, okay, opens here and closes there. Now, if I were writing this, I would have made that a bracket, not a parenthesis. But I guess, or a brace, probably a brace. Uh, because you've got a parenthesis here and here. You have a bracket here and here. So I think I would have made this a brace. Because otherwise, it's hard to determine what belongs where. They don't do that. They don't use braces, so whatever. Now, what if you had the product of a sine mx times a cosine nx? Well, that's going to be one half, and again, I'm going to put the brace here and the brace here, okay? Sine of m minus nx plus sine of n, m plus nx, okay? 
So this is if you had sine sine. This is sine cosine. If you have cosine cosine, okay, then it's one half. And again, I sort of like to have the brace here and a brace here, okay? Cosine of m minus nx plus cosine of m plus nx, okay? So you sine and your cosine, they're very similar. Only thing different is the plus sign, here, minus sign up here, plus sign down here. The product of sine times cosine, then it's sine sine, not cosine cosine, like these two are, sine sine with a plus in between. Okay. No easy way to remember this. Look them up when you need them. I'm not any in favor of trying to memorize things. Because if I tried to memorize something, I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to look it up anyway to make sure I got it right. So look it up. Okay, now if you're a good memorizer, go for it. Perfectly fine. So here's example 8. Find the integral of, uh, I don't think I need my book in my lap, and it's heavy and hot, so let me move that out of the way here. Okay. Find the integral of sine 5x cosine 4x dx okay so this is a product of sine times cosine if you go back one slide you'll see that's the middle one here sine times cosine okay and when you have that one it's going to be the one half in front and then the sine of the difference plus the sine of the sum okay now All right, was there a question? Okay. All right, so let's do what it said. Whoa, I don't know why it did that. I wasn't even touching the screen. And I wasn't touching it there either. Okay, this is bizarre. Okay, so this is, I did touch it there. Okay, this is the integral that's a pretty ugly integral of now remember the one half was in front so let's take the one half outside the integral okay and this was the sine I'm gonna put my brace in there I think okay the sine of the 5x minus 4x that's just gonna be x Okay, again, someone has a microphone on, I believe. Okay, sine of sine mx cosine nx is the one half I pulled on the outside, and then you have sine of the difference here, 5x minus 4x, okay, plus the sine of the sum. Okay, so that will be plus the sine of the sum of these two, that would be 9x dx. So without all the things there, we could just put a parenthesis here, okay? I think that might work better. The brace is sort of messy, okay? So that's one half, okay? What's the antiderivative of sine? That would be minus cosine. Okay, plus, well, it's going to be a minus because antiderivative of sine will be minus cosine, but that's going to be 1 over 9 times the cosine of 9x. Okay, and then we'll have a plus c. So what does this give us? 1 half or minus 1 half cosine x minus 1 18th cosine 9x plus c. I think that's what we got. Let's see what they got. Minus cosine x over 2 minus cosine 9x over 18. Good for them. Plus c. Okay, so it looks like we came up with the same formula. Okay, Andy, I think your microphone's on. 
Okay, thanks. Okay. So let me clear my scratch here and we'll see how they did it. I bet you it's very similar. Considering the second product the sum formula, that was the one in the middle, you can write the integral of sine 5x cosine 4x as one half, pulling that one half on the outside, and then we have the integral of sine of the difference between these two, which is x, plus the sine of the sum of those two, which is 9x. Then you got it times your dx. Okay, that's a fairly straightforward integral to do, the one half on the outside. Antiderivative of sine x is minus cosine x. Antiderivative of sine of 9x is 1 over 9, minus 1 over 9, times the cosine of 9x. And then you got your plus c, and that would produce minus cosine x over 2, minus cosine 9x over 18, plus your constant c. Good deal. Now that is the last PowerPoint, and it's also the last example in the section. So homework exercises here, 8.3. Uh, again, always do the concept check, okay? Those are pretty important. Uh, make sure you understand those concepts, okay? Then homework exercises would be any of the odds, 3 through 13, they're all at Calc Chat. 7's at Calc View. Any of the odds 15 to 19, they're all at Calc Chat. Any of the odds 21 through 33, they're all at Calc Chat. 27's at Calc View. 35 or 37, both at Calc Chat. 39 should be at Calc Chat. 41 should be at Calc Chat. And any of the odds 43 through 47 should all be at Calc Chat. 43 should be at Calc View. Any of the odds 49 to 57, they should all be at Calc Chat. 59 to 65, they should all be at Calc Chat with 61 at Calc View. Um, 67 should be at Calc Chat. 69 should be at Calc Chat. 71 should be at Calc Chat. 73 should be at Calc Chat. 75 should be at Calc Chat. And 77 at Calc Chat. Either 79 or 81 should both be at Calc Chat. 83 or 85 should be at Calc Chat. And then using Wallace's formulas, 87 should be at Calc Chat. 89 should be at Calc Chat. And uh, then there's a uh, section project, if you're interested in that, a little bit more on the Wallace product. Okay. There is a uh, reference at the bottom of that right-hand column that you could potentially use as a paper topic. All right, so any um, questions on 8.3? Okay, I'm going to discard that and in my re PowerPoint here. And let's see if I can find 8.4. I brought it up, but I don't see it. And why it does this, I don't know. I bring it up before class, and then it disappears during class. So what I'm going to do is go back here and go 8.4. Bring it up again. All right. And now I will do new share 8.4. There it is. Okay. All that maneuvering around to give it back where it belongs. All right, we'll go from current slide. Chapter 8 is still integration techniques and improper integrals. We're going to focus on uh, integration techniques. Okay, 8.4, not trigonometric integrals, but trigonometric substitution. Okay, now this is a little different from our U substitution. I'll point that out to you. Stand by for that. Be ready for that. Okay. So here's 8.4, and I also need to move this taskbar out of the way so I can see my screen. I think you can probably see yours okay, but I can't see mine. Okay. And there we go. Our objectives here in 
use trigonometric substitution to find an integral. Yes, and we'll use integrals to model and solve some real life applications. They love real life applications. When I do this on my on the blackboard, I just say use integrals to model and solve problem applications. I don't know why they love putting real life in there. All right, now here are your trigonometric substitutions. Okay, and I have my little way of remembering these that may or may not be helpful for you. Okay, but if you recall your Pythagorean identity. Um, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Okay, so therefore sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Or sine is the square root of 1 minus cosine squared. So also you could say cosine is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared. So that's how I remember this one. Okay, the A is takes the place of 1, and we'll deal with that. But this will be, the U here will be sine X, or sine theta. I like to use theta, okay? So that's going to be your trig substitution here. Now notice the difference here. It's not let U equal something. It's let U equal sine something, okay? So it's a little bit of a subtle difference there, okay? Now this one, a squared plus u squared, I remember that by 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So this is going to be a tangent substitution, okay? Because that's going to give you a tangent, a 1 plus or a, plus, a squared plus this, and that's going to give you a uh, secant squared, square root of secant squared is secant, okay? So that's going to be a tangent. This one, on the other hand, because secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared, this will be a secant substitution. Okay, let u equal secant x. So the objective with the trig substitution is to eliminate the radical in the integrand. Always a good idea, because radicals get to be a pain in the neck. You can do that <coughs> by using these Pythagorean identities. 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared, okay? 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. And secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. So there are your substitutions. Now, sure enough, we don't have necessarily a 1. We have an A. The A will work just as well, okay? So, for an example, for A's positive, let u equal a sine theta, okay? Now, this is only good from minus pi halves to pi halves, okay? Because this is a repeating function, and let's just take one interval of it, from minus pi halves to pi halves, okay? Now, put the a in there. That takes care of the 1, basically. Uh, and if you have a squared minus u squared, where u is a sine theta, then u squared would be a squared sine squared theta. Well, here you have an a squared. There you have an a squared sine squared theta. Factor out the a squared, and that gets a on the outside here. And then you have a 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared, and the, you've lost the radical. The Square root of a squared is a, square root of cosine squared is cosine. No more radicals. That's the beauty of your trig substitutions. Now, this cosine theta is always positive here because remember, you went from minus pi halves to pi halves on your theta. If you do that with cosine, that's going to be from minus pi halves to pi halves is going to be only positive, okay? So, uh, you same theta you had here, you've got here, okay? That's going to eliminate integrating things that you go to zero or cancel things out because your cosine is all positive. So, here are our trig substitutions. 
if you have an integral that has <coughs> a radical, a squared minus u squared, think sine substitution. Let u equal a sine theta, okay? And then the a squared, when you square that, you'll have a squared, pull the a out, and then you'll have 1 minus uh, sine squared, which is cosine squared, pull that out, okay? So this thing here becomes that. Now, that is a good substitution, but the other thing you can do with that, if you set that up this way, draw your little triangle, okay? The U is sort of like your, um, well, think of it this way. Divide both sides by A. U over A is equal to sine theta. Well, what is sine theta? Opposite over hypotenuse, okay? So your hypotenuse is the A, the opposite is the U. There's your U, there's your A. This side over here becomes the square root of U squared minus A squared. Exactly what you got here. I mean, square root of A squared minus U squared. Exactly what you got here. So you see this triangle basically confirms you made the right choice. Okay? Everything works out nicely. Okay? You'll use this when it comes time to evaluate your integrals. Now, when you have a squared plus u squared, again, think of u being your tangent. So, put the a with it, a tangent theta. There's your, your uh, substitution. If you divided both sides by a, tangent would be u over a. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, your opposite side is your u. Your adjacent side is the a and the hypotenuse would then be the square root of a squared plus u squared, which is exactly what you have there, okay? Works out nicely. And again, we go from minus pi halves to pi halves. Now, one little subtle difference. This includes the minus pi halves and the pi halves. This one does not because tangent of pi halves and minus pi halves not defined. Those are vertical asymptotes not defined there. So you have to leave off the equal, equality here. You can have the equality here, but not down here. Okay, then this one would be, let u equal a secant squared theta. Okay, or secant theta. Well, what do you have then? If u is a secant, square, secant theta, u squared would be a squared secant squared theta. A squared's come out as an a, and then you have secant squared minus 1, which is uh, tangent squared, okay? So this one will become a tangent theta. Now that's true for u greater than a, okay? Uh, and in this case, you have to be between 0 and pi halves. Not including pi halves because secant is not defined at pi halves either. However, if you're at between, yeah, I can't see this, between pi halves and pi, then you have the minus there. Most of the time, we don't worry with those. But if you need to, worry with them, okay? Again, here, if you did divided both sides by a, you get secant theta is u over a. Well, what is that? Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, okay? So your hypotenuse is here, u, your adjacent is a here, and this is your square root of u squared minus a squared here. Exactly what you have there. So you'll find the little triangles are very beneficial when you're finding your solutions, okay? So here's example one. All right, let me get my pen in hand. How are we doing on time? Oh my goodness, we just run out of time. Sorry about that. Sorry, I had to go to the bathroom. That <laughs> sort of ate up some of our time. Let me find the pencil here. And we're just about to start on example one. Top of page 542. Okay. All right. Can't believe I haven't got a mark anywhere on the page. 
So let's see, we probably didn't cover enough new material here to have any homework exercises in 8.4, but you got plenty in 8.3. Okay, any questions? All right. All right, well, good deal, folks. Have a good weekend, which means a safe weekend. Could be sort of rainy for part of it. I think it's also supposed to drop in temperature a little bit, so be careful, but please be safe. And y'all know what next Tuesday is, don't you? Please say yes. It's ele election day. I hope that you've already voted. Okay, I really hope you're registered to vote. I should have started with that. And if you are registered to vote, I'm sort of hoping you're already voted. We did. My wife and I went down back in September and voted one Friday. Okay, uh, but if you are registered and you haven't voted yet, please, please, please. I get so disgusted with the uh, elections that you have like 45% turnout of registered voters. That means 23% of the voters decide who the elected official is. That's not a democracy. Please vote. Please get out there and vote. All right. I think, Andy, you said you probably can't. Is that right? But whatever. If you can vote, please vote. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing. Y'all be safe. Be careful. Have a good weekend. And we'll see you on Monday. All right, so I'm going to end the recording unless there's some question or other things that pop up now. Anything? All right, all right. take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.